Hello everyone, um, I'm Shantani from the Young Scientist Committee. We'll just give it a couple more minutes and then we'll start shortly. All right, we'll get started. Um, so once again, welcome all to our um, Back to Basics series, this time on statistics. Um, once again, this workshop has been organized by the Young Scientists Committee of the Controlled Release Society and has been proudly sponsored by CureVac. Um, just some housekeeping rules, uh, make sure your videos and microphone are turned off throughout this um, workshop. If you have any questions, please um, raise them using the chat function. Um, we have moderators in this session, Sarah and Francisco, who would assist you with answering those questions during the presentation. If they can't, um, they would then have the questions to be answered by the presenter at the end of his um, presentation. So just a bit about um, the Control Release Society Young Scientist Committee. We are basically a group of PhD students and early career scientists from all around the world. And we are basically here to support you guys. So um, we organize plenty of networking events, scientific workshops, as well as um, professional, uh, provide professional development and career opportunities. So do follow us on our social media to stay um, in touch with us. Um, control, for those of you who don't know, Control Release Society um, is quite a prestigious society when it comes to the drug delivery space. Um, so do consider joining us as member as well. Um, and like I said, we do have um, more events coming up um, in saying that we actually have the next um, Back to Basics series on communication skills happening in two weeks time. So do follow us on social media um, to get more information on this. Um, the Control Release Society is also putting together a virtual annual meeting this time. Um, you can find out more details about it um, through this um, website that, I've, um, that I have here for you. Cool. Um, so for today's statistics workshop, um, we are very happy to have um, Tony presenting us um, about it. Thank you once again, Tony, for saying yes to this. Um, so he's currently a PhD student at the Drug Bio Laboratory, which is um, located in the Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Technology de de Department at the University of Valencia. Um, Tony is currently working under the supervision of Professor Anna and Professor Teresa, um, where his team carries out research um, looking at the development and optimization of new pharmaceutical forms to control and improve absorption of drugs through the topical, oral, and ocular routes. Um, 
Prior to starting his, um, his PhD, Tony completed his um, degree in pharmacy at the University of Valencia and thereafter completed his master's degree in um, research and rational use of drugs in 2017. And last year, Tony has been um, uh, awarded the title Expert in Statistics Applied to Health Sci uh, Sciences at ADIT Foundation, which is amazing. So we are very privileged to have him um, talking about statistics to us today. So without further ado, I'll pass this on to Tony to kick us off with some um, basics on statistics. It's all yours, Tony. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, hi everyone, uh, this is Tony and today we are going to take a look to the SPSS software for statistics and what type of uh, statistical tests we have to do in the most common scientific studies in our field. And this is a general overview of um, our plan for today. So first, uh, we're going to know how the FPSS is organized. Then we will take a general reminder of the statistics theory and hypothesis testing. And finally, I'm going to present different examples of each statistical text, test uh, explaining the requirements to complete them, uh, showing how you can run the test, and discussing the obtained results. Um, for this, I'm going to use a, a PowerPoint presentation and the SPSS program. And I have to switch uh, from one to the other in the Zoom program. Uh, so maybe I need some time to do it, and I'm very sorry for this issue, but I will try to do my best, okay? So um, the SPSS is a program which is organized in two different interfaces. The first one is this interface, this window, uh, which is uh, the results window where the program shows the results of the test. Here, uh, I have to say that we cannot do a lot uh, because we can just see the obtained results. But um, here in the, sorry. Mm -mm. Can you see the screen? And it can confirm in the chat. It's appearing as a black screen. Oh, now we see ah, it. No, yeah. Um, this is the result, the, the main window or the main interface of the SPSS where we can, um, on one hand, ask uh, the SPSS uh, for the statistical test that we consider convenient. And on the other hand, we can uh, open, save, and create our databases. This main window is split up in two different parts, data view and variable view. Here, data view uh, contains the database that we are uh, using at this moment. Uh, and here, each column uh, is one variable or one filter, and each rank represents one sample or one subject. Uh, if we go to variable view, we can see all the variables included in the database and we can add as many as we want. And for this, uh, we just designate the name of uh, the variable, for example, gender. And then we have to complete uh, the information such as the type of variable, the decimals, if we want to add any label or any information, but it's really important uh, that if we use a nominal measure, we have to complete and clarify the 
ranges or the code for the variable. For example, for gender, the value zero can mean woman, and the value one can mean man. And this is very important because if we go back to data view, we can see that we have generated a new column with a new variable, and we can complete this column using these codes. And this is very important because we will need these codes to order and to complete the statistical test. So, going back to the um, uh, presentation, uh, I have to say that in any study, we are considering a problem uh, and making an hypothesis. Uh, the hypothesis testing is a decision process in which an hypothesis is formulated in statistical terms and put in relation to the empirical data in order to determine if both are compatible. For example, uh, one possible statement uh, would be, is the treatment A more effective than the treatment B? But if we translate this approach uh, into an hypothesis, the final result would be treatment A is more effective than treatment B, without the question. Uh, in statistics, this hypothesis is formulated as a double one. First, the null hypothesis, which means that the distribution of the data are the distribution of the data of one variable is the same in all the groups. And second, the alternative hypothesis, which means that the distribution of data of one variable is different between the groups. Therefore, uh, the hypothesis testing uh, has two different steps. Uh, first, to reject or accept the null hypothesis. And second, to accept the alternative hypothesis in case of rejecting the null one. Uh, this is the reason why uh, it's essential to know the meaning of the hypothesis because depending on the context and the study, the meaning of the hypothesis can change. For example, the null hypothesis can mean that there are no statistically significant differences between the groups when we are using a t-test or an ANOVA. It can mean that the distribution of the values of a sample is similar to the normal distribution if we are using a normality test, or it can mean that there is no significant statistical relation between variables. Uh, on the contrary, uh, the alternative hypothesis uh, means the opposite because it can mean that there are, uh, there are significant differences between the groups when, we're, when we are using a t-test or an ANOVA it can mean that the distribution of values of a sample is different from the normal distribution if we are in a normality test, or it can mean that there is a statistically significant relation between variables. Also, previously to run any test, it's essential to choose the level of significance that we want for our test. In other words, we have to establish from which point we consider that the differences or relations appear. In this case, uh, there are two different groups, the group one and the group two, with different means, but with a certain degree of overlap because some of the subjects from the first group present higher values than those in the other group. And depending on the statistical value that we use, the p-value, the degree of overlap allowed between the groups changes. Um, usually, the most used p-value is 0 0.05, uh, which means that five out of 100 times, the null hypothesis is true and we will reject it. But we can use other p-values such as 0 0.01, which means that one out of 100 times, the null hypothesis is true and we will reject it. Um, however, for example, a p-value of 0 0.01 allows a lesser degree of overlap between our data, and therefore the probability to find differences between the groups will be less. But the choice of using one or another p-value depends only on you, and you can 
try with uh, the, the p value that you want. Uh, to conclude this introduction, uh, I present a map to choose the proper statistical test because this choice basically depends on the type, number, and categories of the variables that we are going to use. If we are using a qualitative or categoric variable, we use the chi-square test. Uh, and remember that the qualitative or nominal variable are those which are not numerical and classify the data in different categories. For example, the ice colors, uh, are a qualitative variable because we can classify them in blue, brown, or green, for example. Uh, on the other hand, if we have one qualitative variable and one quantitative, we have to check how many categories has the qualitative variable. Because if the number of categories is two, we use uh, the independent sample t test. If we have different groups, while if the data are organized in the same group, we will use the paired sample details. When the qualitative uh, variable has three different categories and the data are organized in different groups, we use the one-way ANOVA, while if there is only one group, we use the one repeated measures ANOVA. Uh, there are four possible requirements that we should check uh, before or during the running of the statistical test. And these requirements are the absence of outliers, the normal distribution, the quality of variances or homoelasticity, and finally, the sphericity. The presence of outliers and the normal distribution uh, should be checked before the running of any test. Uh, while the homoelasticity and dispersity should be checked during the running um, of the t-test or the ANOVA. Um, outliers are experimental data that are three standard deviations away from the mean of the group, and that may influence the result, such as the measures of central tendency, like the mean, the median, or the mode, and the variability and relation between variables. And that the way to do, the way to detect them is using the zeta score values or standardized values. And regarding the normal distribution, uh, I have to say that it's very important to check it because first, uh, the most used statistical tests are parametric and based on this distribution, and second most of the natural phenomena that we study present a normal distribution. And we have two different tests to check the normal distribution or normality, uh, which are on one hand, the shapiro wick test that we use when the data, the number of data that we have in our database is lower than 50. And the kolmogorov ermisnov uh, test that we will use when the number of data is higher than 50. So from now, we are going to practice with several examples where uh, we will detect the presence of outliers in our data and take them off for the analysis. We will check the normality and the other requirements. And finally, we will uh, run several t-tests, ANOVAs, and G-squares. Uh, for this, the databases that I'm going to use are relatively simple. Uh, with only a few variables, but you can try with the same procedures and tests using as many variables as you want and making the study as difficult as you need. And also remember that the SPSS uh, uses a p-value of 0 0.05 by default, and, theref and therefore uh, we will accept the null hypothesis when the obtained p-value in the analysis is higher than 0 0.05, and we will accept the alternative hypothesis when the p-value is lower than 0 0.05, okay, right? Uh, so let's go uh, with an example to detect the outliers and check the normality. And for this, I'm going to use um, this database 
I hope that you will see it. That we will use uh, in the next example too. And let's imagine that we want to uh, detect uh, the outliers for the treatment group, right? Here we have the treatment, the, the different treatment that we are studying, treatment, no treatment, and control. And, but we have to say that we have uh, another qualitative variable, which is the anxiety, which divides our um, uh, treatment groups in two. Because here we have people treated without anxiety and people treated with the drug with anxiety. So, uh, I have to say that to calculate the standardized values and therefore uh, to detect the outliers, we have to use the subgroups if we have it. Uh, for this, we can use this tool or this option, which is select cases. We go to data, select cases, and we can use this option if condition is satisfied, because here we can add uh, one uh, variable, for example, group equal and zero, because in our database, zero means treatment in this column. So we are using this condition, and now we are using only this, uh, these cases, which are the group treatment. But as I said, we need to use the subgroups and for this, we have to increase the selection of the cases, going here to data, select cases, and increasing the, the, this, this option using this, this, this tool and including the second uh, variable, in this case, anxiety, equal and zero, because zero means in our database anxiety. We can continue, and now we are using only these cases. So, what's next? Now we have to um, calculate the standardized values for this group, and we can do it here in analysis, descriptive statistics, and descriptives. Here in this box, in the variables, we have to add our quantitative variable, in this case is the pain, and click this option, save standardized values as variables. We can go on. And now we have generated a new column where uh, we can see that we don't have any outlier because the standardized values are lower than two. Now we have to repeat the same procedure with the no anxiety group. So we have to change the conditions to select the cases and we have to change the zero and use the one because in our database, one means uh, no anxiety. We can continue. And now we are using these cases. So we repeat the procedure here in analyze descriptive statistics, descriptives, and we include here in this box the pain our quantitative variable, and click this option, save standardized values as variables. We can continue. And uh, here we have generated the new uh, column with the standardized values. And as we can see, we don't have any outlier. So what's next? Now we have to to check the normality for the treatment group. For this, we are going to select all the cases for treatment using only the first condition, group zero. And now we are using again only these uh, first 17 cases. So to calculate our to check the, the normality, we can go to analyze. 
here, sorry, uh, analyze descriptive statistics, explore, and here in the dependent list, we have to add our qualitative variable, the pain, and here in the factor list, we have to add our uh, qualitative um, uh, variable. Here in the dependent list, the quantitative, and here in the factor list, the qualitative. We can go to plots and check that we have selected this option, normality plots with test. We can continue. And if we go to the results uh, window, we can see that now we have some descriptive information for the variable pain for the group anxiety and some descriptive information for the variable pain and the group no anxiety. Here we have the result of the test of normality for the variable pain and the group anxiety and the second subgroup no anxiety. And as we said, here we have less than 50 cases, so we we'll, we have to use the Shapiro weak test. And here we have the p-value. In these cases, the p-value in both cases, the p-value is lower than is higher than 0 0.05. And remember that if the p-value is higher than 0 0.05. Uh, we have to uh, uh, we have to accept the null hypothesis that in this case means that our data present a distribution similar to the normal one. So in this case, we can say that we meet the uh, normality requirement. Okay, uh, but let's go with the first example with the first t test where uh, we know that a certain treatment has been given to improve the back pain and the results have been compared to a group control. The first objective of this study is to analyze if there is an influence of the anxiety that certain patients have on the pain after receiving the treatment. Uh, first of all, we have to understand what is the the main goal of the study, and in this case, is to analyze if there is an influence of the anxiety on the pain in people who have been receiving the treatment. So uh, we are going to use the previous um, the previous database where we have one qualitative variable, the anxiety, which has two different categories, and one quantitative variable, the pain. How many groups we have? Uh, we have two different groups because the variable anxiety presents two different categories. And if we have one qualitative and one quantitative variables with two categories organized in different groups, we have to use the independent sample t test. Uh, but what are the requirements for this test? The requirements are the absence of outliers the normality and the quality of variances. Uh, we know that we don't have outliers and normality, so we can go directly to the independent sample test and at the same time to check the equality of variances. Here uh, we are using again the same database and we can run the t-test here in analyze, descriptive statistics, sorry, in analyze, compare means, independent sample t-test. And here we have to add our quantitative variable, the pain, and here our grouping variable or qualitative variable, in this case, the anxiety. And we have to define the groups. We have to use zero and one because in our database no anxiety means one and anxiety means zero so we have to use this code and we can continue and now in the results window we have here the table for the independent sample t-test 
where we can see first the result for the Levens test or equality of variances, and second, the t-test for the equality of means. Uh, in this case, uh, for the Levens test, we have uh, a p-value higher than 0 0.05. So we can assume the, that the variances are equal because in this case, we accept the null hypothesis. In case to obtain a p-value lower than 0 0.05, we have to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative one, which means that we don't have an equal variances. In this case, as we assume the equal variances, we will use this first rank, and this is the p-value or significance for the independent sample states, which is lower than 0 0.05, which means that we have to reject the uh, null hypothesis and uh, accept the alternative hypothesis. If we go back to the descriptive uh, information, we can conclude that there is an influence of the anxiety on the pain, and particularly the pain that people present when they have anxiety is significantly higher than the pain that people present when they don't present anxiety. Okay, uh, but let's imagine that in the normality test, we obtain a p-value uh, lower than 0 0.05. If here we obtain a p-value lower than 0 0.05, we have to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis that in a normality test means that we don't have a normal distribution. Our data present a distribution which is different from the normal one. Um, in this case, we cannot use the t-test because the t-test is a uh, parametric uh, test, and if we don't have a normal distribution, it's impossible to use it. But we have a solution because we can use the non-parametric test. To use the non-parametric test, we have to go to analyze non-parametric test, and in this case, independent samples, because we have two different groups. And here we can, we can go to fields and include in our test fields, our quantitative variable, in this case, the pain. And here in, our, uh, in, in the variable group, our qualitative variable. And we can run the test. And here we have the results of the non-parametric test. In this case, the null hypothesis means that the distribution of pain is the same across the categories of anxiety, and the p-value is lower than 0 0.05. So in this case, we have to reject the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, and accept the alternative hypothesis, which means that we have differences between the pain according to the variable anxiety. This is the same conclusion than in the t-test, but trust me, if you don't have or if you don't meet uh, the normal distribution, you don't have to use the t-test because the result can be different from the non-parametric test and the parametric test uh, such as the t-test. So the next example is this one where uh, we want to know if a workout program increases the distance that people can run for each subject. And we know that the distance uh, that they could run has been measured before and after the workout program. We are, going to, we are going to use a new database, which is this one.
uh, and we can see here in variable view that we have two different uh, quantitative variables, the distance that people can run before the workout program and the distance that people can run after the workout program. We have one qualitative variable, the variable group, with two different meanings, zero workout and one no workout. And here, we can see that if we want, if we have one qualitative variable and one quantitative, and we have two different categories in this case, we have two categories because the measures of the distance have been measured before and after, and we have only one group because the measure comes from the same people. In this case, we use the per sample t-test and the requirements for uh, this test are the absence of outliers and the uh, normality, the normal distribution. So I'm going to go again to the database. Okay, and what's the first uh, step? The first step is to use only the workout group. And for this, we can use the option select cases. Remember data, select cases. If condition is satisfied, and we can include here the variable group equal and zero because in our database zero means workout. We can continue. And now we are using only the workout group. Uh, in this case, we don't have any subgroup, so we can go directly to calculate the standardized values. So we can go to analyze descriptive statistics descriptives. Here we have to include our quantitative variables, distance before and distance after. We have to click this option, save standardized values as variables, and we can go on. Now we have here uh, the new columns with the standardized values, and we can observe that this uh, case is an outlier because the um, the standardized value is higher than three. So we have to take uh, it off from the data and we can do it using the option select cases because we can increase the conditions to select the cases and now we are going to use, sorry, one moment. If this is an outlier, we can change the category and select the cases because now we can include this column equal and zero because zero means no outlier. We can continue. And now we are using only the first 16 cases. So what's next? Uh, the next step is to check the um, the normal distribution, and we can do it here in Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. And as in the previous case, in the dependent list, we have to introduce our quantitative variable, distance before and distance after. And here, we don't need to include in the factor list any qualitative variable because we are working only with the workout group. Here, if we go to plots, we can click this option, normality plots with test, and we can continue. Now, if we go to the results window, we can see some descriptive information for the variable distance before and distance after. Um, and here we have the normality test. Here, for the um, variable distance before and distance after, we can see that 
according to the Shapiro week test, because we have less than 50 cases, we have uh, p-values higher than 0 0.05. So in this case, we have to accept the null hypothesis and confirm that our data follow a normal distribution. Okay, um, so now we can continue with the t-test and for this we can go to analyze, compare means and in this case, as, I, as we said, we are going to use the paired sample t-test and here we can include our quantitative variables, distance before and distance after and we can go on. And here we have the p-value of, of the test. In this case, <clears throat> the p-value obtained is lower than 0 0.05. So in this case, we have to reject the null hypothesis and confirm the alternative hypothesis. That in a period sample t-test means that we go here again to the descriptive information that the distance that people can run before and after the, um, the workout program is significantly different and particularly the distance that people can run after the workout, the workout program is higher than the distance that people can run before the workout program. Um, but what happens if we don't meet the normality requirement? Uh, if we obtain here a p-value lower than 0 0.05, which means that we don't have a normal distribution, we cannot use the t-test for the same reason uh, than previously, because the t-test is a parametric uh, test and if we don't have a normal distribution we cannot use them but the solution is here to use again the non-parametric test analyzed non-parametric test and in this case related samples because uh, we have only one group and in the option fields to add here in this box, the distance after the, and the distance before, which are our quantitative variables and run the test. And here we have the results of the hypothetic non-parametric test, where the null hypothesis is rejected because the p-value is lower than 0 0.05. Okay, the next type uh, of test uh, are the ANOVAs. Um, uh, because uh, the next type of test is the ANOVAs, uh, and they are used when the qualitative variable presents three different categories or even more. And the reason of this is because if we compare more than two groups between them, the error uh, is not one that we have set in the p-value because we are accumulating this error. I mean, we are comparing this group, this first group with this second and with the third, and we are comparing the second with the first and the third and the third with the first and the second. So the error is being accumulating after each comparison. The ANOVA test presents two different steps. The first step is uh, to determine uh, if we have differences in general in our study. And the second step is to determine between which variables or conditions we have those differences. Um, the first information uh, is given by the ANOVA test and the second information is given by the post hoc analysis. In this case, uh, 
the requirements in the one way ANOVA are the absence of outliers, the normality, and the homoselasticity, the quality of variances. And in this case, the Levent test determines the optimal post hoc analysis. Because if the p value in the Levent test is lower than 0 0.05, we use the Games Howell test with the Wells test instead of the ANOVA. And if the p value is higher than 0 0.05, we can use Bonferroni when the number of comparison is small, the Taki comparison when the number of comparison is, is medium or high, and the Gabriel when the, when the groups have different number of data. Now we are going to use this example where we have micro containers with different shapes for oral drug delivery, and we want to know if the different shapes affects to the MOOC adhesion of the microcontainers in the small intestine. As we will see in the database, uh, we will have one qualitative variable, the shape of the microcontainers, which has three different categories, squares, triangles, or cylinders. And on the other hand, we have one quantitative variable, the percentage of MOOC adhesion, uh, and therefore, we have three different groups, which are the three different categories of the qualitative variable. So, if we have one quantitative and one qualitative variable with three different categories, and they are organized in different groups, we use the one-way ANOVA. So, I'm going to use this new database. Okay, where we have here a, quant a qualitative variable the shape with three different categories and one quantitative variable the percentage of the mucoation of the microcontainers so the first step is again to check the presence of outliers and the normal distribution and we have to go to data and select cases First of all, we have to select the squares. So we add the variable shape equals zero because zero means squares in our database. And now we are using only this, um, these cases. We can calculate the standard, uh, the standardized uh, values or the CETA scores here in analyze Descriptive statistics, descriptives, and here in variables, we can add our uh, quantitative variable and cleave this option save standardized values as values. And now we have here our new um, column with the values of. Um, uh, of the values of the standardized uh, uh, values. Uh, we can see that, what, that we don't have any outlier, so we can go with the next uh, case. We change the condition. Now we are using the, the um, triangle shape and we can repeat the same procedure. Remember, analyze descriptive statistics, descriptives, and here we have to include our qualitative quantitative variable and click this option. Here we can see that we don't have any outlier. So we can go for the last group. We can change the conditions. Now we are using only the cylinders and we can repeat the procedure in analyze descriptive statistics, descriptives. We include here our quantitative variable and click this option and we can go on. And we can observe that we don't have any outlier. So 
Now we have to uh, check the normality. And for this, we are going to use all the cases. Now we are using again all the database. And we can check the normality here in Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. We have to include in the dependent list our quantitative variable and here in our factor list our qualitative variable, the shape. Go here to plots and click this option, normality plots with test. We can continue and now if we go to a results uh, window, we can see some descriptive information for the percentage of micro containers uh, variable for the squares, triangles and cylinders. Here we have the normality test for the qualitative variable in the different conditions, in the different shapes. And as we have less than 60, less than 50 uh, cases, we are going to use again the Shapiro week test and the p-value of the three cases are higher than 0 0.05. Uh, and therefore we have to accept the null hypothesis and confirm that our data of mucoadhesions follow a normal distribution. Okay, we go back to the presentation. And as I said, the, the, we can run the Leven test at the same time uh, we can we can um, run the one the one way ANOVA at the same time that the event test. So for this, um, we can go here to analyze, com uh, compare means, and using this case one way ANOVA. Here in the dependent list, we have to include. Uh, our qualitative variable, and here in factor, we have to include our qualitative variable, the shape. Here we have to go to postdoc and click the possible uh, post hoc analysis, which are Bonferroni, Taki, Gabriel, and Games Howell. And we can continue. And now, here in our results window, we have the result of the ANOVA, and in this case, the ANOVA says that uh, we have a p-value lower than 0 0.05, which means that we have to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative one. So we can conclude that we have difference in our case, but to know between what variables uh, we have the differences, we have to use the post hoc test. And in this case, we have to repeat the analysis here in analyze, compare means, one way ANOVA. And here in option, we have to include the Levens test, the homogeneity of variances, and the Wells test, because in case that obtain a Levens test lower than 0 0.05, we will use the, the Wells uh, test. We can continue. And here in our results, now we have the homogeneity of variances for uh, our quantitative variable. I usually use this rank based on mean. And here we have a p-value lower than 0 0.05 so we can um, we can assume the quality of variances and therefore we can use the weld um, test which says that we have a p-value lower than 0 0.05 and in the same way the games howell uh, says the same because the squares and the cylinders present a uh, P value lower than 0 0.05, uh, but the squares and the triangles present a p value higher than 0 0.05, and the same with, between 
the triangles and cylinder. So the conclusions of our analysis is that the shape affects the mucoadhesion properties of the microcontainers and particularly the squares and triangles present a higher significant um, mucoadhesion rather than the cylinders. Here we can compare the means, which are 33, 27, and 13, okay? So, let's go with the one-way repeated measure SONOVA. And in this case, we are using a problem where the aim is uh, to study or to compare the level of pain during several weeks in people who receive a specific pharmacological treatment. We know that the level of pain has been measured before the treatment, one week and after the treatment, and four weeks after the treatment. This is the case. We have the three different measures here, the pre-treatment, the post-treatment one week, and the post-treatment four weeks. In this case, as we will see in the database, we have one qualitative variable, which is the pain, the level of pain, and one quantitative variable, which is the treatment. The requirements for uh, this, uh, this analysis are the presence, the absence of outliers, the normality, and the sphericity. And as we have three different categories, we have three different times, the pre-treatment, the post-treatment one week, and the post-treatment four weeks, and the data are organized in the same group, because the measures are in the same population, we use the one-way repeated measure SONOVA. If we go to the database, let me open it. Um, we can see the three different uh, quantitative variable, the pain before, the pain after one week, and the pain after four weeks, and the column for the outliers. So the first, the first step is again to check the normality and the presence of outliers. So for this, we go to data, select cases, if any condition is satisfied, uh, but in this case, we don't have to use any, any selection because we are using the, the, the group treatment. And um, we have to go directly to analyze descriptive, descriptives and here to include our three different variables. And click this option, save standardized values as variables. And now, we have generated the three different columns with the CETA score values. And we see that we don't have any outlier. We can check it. We don't have any outlier. So we can go directly to check the normality here in analyze, descriptive statistics, explore, and here in the dependent list to include our quantitative variables and go here in plots to click the normality plots with test and we can continue and if we go to the results window we can see the descriptives um, the descriptive information and the test of normality for the three different measures in this case the level of significance is higher in than 0 0.05 in the three cases. So we can accept the null hypothesis and reject, uh, sorry, we can reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. Uh, that in this case means that we follow a normal distribution, right? So the next step is going back to the database and uh, run the uh, 
one way repeated measures and all that. For this, we have to go to general linear model, here repeated measures, and here we have to add the factor. What is our factor? Our factor is the time. Why? Because we have measured the same property, the pain, the, pain, the level of pain, but in three different moments. So we have to use here pain, three different levels. We add this information. And here, the measure that the name of our measure is the pain. We can define. And now in this box, we have to include all the quantitative variables and use this option means to take into account our time, our factor, and usually use here Bonferroni, but it's the same if you use CDAC uh, from a practical point of view, it's completely the same. Um, we can continue and we can go on. And here the one way repeated uh, measure SANOVA uh, provides us a lot of information. We have uh, many tables, but the important one are the first, uh, which says that the pain before in our code is one, the pain after in our the pain after one week in our code is two, and the pain after four weeks in our code is three. Then we can go to the Mauchly test to check the sphericity. And for this case, we obtain a p-value lower than zero point, uh, higher than 0 0.05. So uh, this means that we meet the sphericity requirement because we are accepting the null hypothesis and assume the sphericity. Now, uh, as we assume the sphericity, we have to use this rank, the third table, which presents a level of significance lower than 0 0.05. And we can conclude that we have differences in general in our study. But to know between what conditions we have those differences, we have to use this table, the pairway comp comparisons, where we can see that we have a p-value lower than 0 0.05 between the condition one, which was before, and the condition two, which was um, after one week. And we don't have any, any difference more because the relation between one and three is higher than 0 0.05. And also the relation between two and three is lower than 0 0.05, which means that we have significant differences between two and three conditions. We go back to the descriptive information. We can see and we can conclude that uh, we can uh, that the patients which present uh, the patients present a higher significant level of pain before the treatment in comparison with the following week, the one week before, one week after, but four weeks after the treatment, they have a level of pain comparable to the first one. And this is the case that we have here in our in in the slide because the group treatment, the group uh, the pretreatment uh, time presents a, a level of pain similar to the post treatment but different from the post-treatment one week. I mean, we have differences between this group and this, and between this and this, but we don't have any difference be between the group pre-treatment and the post-treatment group. So to finish, uh, we are going to you, uh, I'm going to explain the chair square test, which we use when we are working only with qualitative variables. 
uh, this test is based in the use of two per two cross tables as we have in the slide and uh, these tables present two variables each one with two categories here category one and category two for variable two and category one and category two for variable one and it's useful to estimate the relative risk uh, which is the probability that a condition appears in one group uh, versus the probability to appear in another group and to establish relations between variables. Um, this test will provide us, uh, as we will in the next example, uh, a final results table where we can compare our experimental recount or experimental data with the expected recount that should be appear in the different cells if the categories of the variable were independent. And also, uh, it provides us uh, several p-values that we can use to confirm if there is any relation between the variables. The only requirement that, sorry, that we have to meet is the absence of, cell, of cells with an expected count less than five in the final results cross table. And um, in this case, we are going to use a problem where the question is, if we have a significant relation between applying a stem cell treatment and bone regeneration. So if we open the database, Here we can see that we have two different uh, qualitative variable with two different categories, no stem cell and stem cell treatment. And uh, bone regeneration with two different categories, no bone regeneration and bone regeneration. And we can go directly to the analysis here in analyzed, descriptive statistics, cross tabs and we have to include in a row one of the uh, qualitative variable and here in the column we have to include the another one we have to go to statistics and ask for the chia square and the risk and uh, go here to cells and ask for the observed and expected counts so now if we go to the uh, window, uh, the results window, we can see that we have first here our uh, final results cross table, uh, where we can see that for the condition no stem cell treatment, we have 16 cases of no bone regeneration and four cases of bone regeneration and the expected count for those cells are 9.3 and 10.7 respectively if the categories were independent uh, and uh, for the condition stem cell treatment we have an, expect, uh, an experimental count of four cases of no bone regeneration and 19 cases of bone regeneration while the expected counts are 10.7 and 12.3 respectively. Here in the chia square uh, table, we see that all the p-values that we have are lower than 0 0.05, which means that we have to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis that in a context of a chia square uh, means that uh, we have a significant relation between the variables, in this case, the treatment uh, with the stem cells and the bone regeneration. And in this sentence, we can see that we meet the normal, the, the requirement because zero cells have an expected count less than five. And finally, here in the risk estimate table, we can see that we have 
19, uh, the probability, sorry, the probability to regenerate the bone is 19 times higher when we use the, strength, the stem cell treatment in relation when we don't use this treatment. So, let's make the final conclusions. First, uh, you must remember the meaning of the hypothesis in the different studies, because the meaning of the hypothesis can change. Uh, second, you have to calculate the outlier for the groups or subgroups using the standardized values. Third, you have to check the normality of your data distribution before running any test. Fourth, you have to use the non-parametric test when you don't meet the normality requirement in your t-test. Pay attention to the number, type, and categories of variables because they will define the proper statistical test. And finally, uh, use the uh, result of the event test to choose the proper post hoc analysis in your ANOVA test. So I think that's everything for me. Um, I think that we are going to provide you a document with, do with this piece of information because I know that it's very difficult to follow the, the lecture if, is this a, if this is the first time that you work with the statistics. If there is any question, I will try and answer. And thank you for watching. Cool. Thanks a lot, Tony. That was um, that was really good. Thank you so much for the efforts in um, putting together this presentation. I hope everyone did learn um, quite a lot, actually, about stati uh, statistics. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, cool. And yes, like um, Tony said, he has kindly put together a document which would we would be sending out um, together with the recording, um, a recording link to this workshop. That so hopefully you can watch it back and learn more. Um, we'll jump into questions. There were a few questions in the chat. So Anna had a question asking which end size would be considered small for born Ferrari and large for Turkey? Okay, wait a moment. Are you, can I share my screen? Or are you, no, are you, you watching my screen? Yeah. Okay, uh, this decision depends, uh, it's, it's, depends basically on you. For example, uh, I think that uh, uh, if you have less than 50 comparisons, uh, you don't have to use the tacky test. So in my personal case, uh, I used to uh, use the Bonferroni uh, post-talk analysis. This is uh, my suggestion. Cool, um, thank you. Um, there were a few more questions, but um, the moderators have done a great job answering them as well. Raya has asked us, um, what is the difference between SPSS and PRISM PET? Sorry, I, I, I didn't hear you. Um, what is the difference between SPSS software and PRISMA PET? Oh, uh, I don't know, because I never use the PRISMA, uh, but I think that the, 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 the tests that you can run in are the same in both cases. Uh, and I think that the theory is completely the same. You have to know where test you have to use in every moment, but maybe the layout of the prism is different, but I think that they are quite similar in, in, in this way. Cool, yep, so I guess that's what Sarah has just answered as well. You want to ask a question. Um, what is the meaning of the Welch test as a post hoc analysis? Okay, the Welch test uh, is the alternative when here, wait a moment. I'm going to try to find it. 
but the Welch test is the alternative to the ANOVA when uh, the Levens test offers a p-value lower than 0 0.05, because in this case, we have to uh, reject the null hypothesis, accept the alternative hypothesis, and we have to conclude that we don't have uh, unequal variances. So I don't know if I am able to find it. I don't find it, but if you want, we can try to repeat the the, the test here. Uh, I think that it was impaired samples t test. No, in here we go to analyze um, repeated measures. Here we have defined this. We have everything. Everything here is okay. Okay, and now I think your question was about the mostly test. Um, no. no, I think no. I think that I'm I, no. I'm mistaken. It was it was about the Welch tests, but yeah, the, Honest said now that he understood he got what you meant. First, he thought the po the Welch test was a post hoc analysis. No, the, 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 the no. But the Wells test is the alternative to the ANANOVA because when the Levens test presents a p-value lower than 0 0.05, uh, we said that the variances of our groups are not equal. So we cannot use the ANOVA and we use the Wells test, an alternative to the ANOVA and the gain Howell an alterna as an alternative of the post-hoc analysis. I mean. Cool. I don't know if, if I, yeah yeah I yeah that's, that's clear question. yeah thanks Sarah for jumping in does anyone else have any other questions that you would like to ask Tony you can post it in the chat we'll give it a couple more minutes um, otherwise yes we'll probably end the meeting if no one else has any questions. Cool. I think that there is a question about the sample size before conducting an, an experiment. I think that the question is, how do we determine the sample size before conducting an experiment? And I have to say that uh, this option and the, the procedure to determine the sample size, uh, we cannot to do it here with the SPSS. We have to do it with the G power. And I think that this is more uh, advanced stuff and more for uh, advanced uh, statistics, uh, but of course, if you if if you can, you have to use the as the maximum number of of data that you can. Yeah, cool. Thanks for that, Tony. Um, yeah. Also, just yeah, follow us on um, social media um, to stay in touch with um, our upcoming workshops. And like I said do consider joining Control Release Society and the annual meeting. Um, that's just quick update again. Um, someone's just asking, sorry, I'm reading the chat at the same time. Uh, someone's asking about the sample size for Bonfrey and Turkey. He's still a bit confused. Okay. Um... This decision to use uh, the Bonferroni or the Taki um, is, depends mainly on you. And some authors say one, uh, one number and other authors say another number. But 
uh, in general, we have to use the bomb ferroni because the tacky test is generally used for when you have, for example, I don't know, 20 groups, and you have to compare these 20 groups with another 20 groups. Uh, so the final number of comparisons is really, really, really high. And uh, I just recommend to use the Pomferroni mm -hmm. because I think that it's uh, the, the simplest way, the, the, the more practical approach. And we have got another question to confirm if Levant's test give P value of less than 0 0.05. We use Welch test with no post test and don't use ANOVA. If we obtain a P value lower than 0 0.05 in the Levant's test, we don't have to use the table of the ANOVA. We have to use the second table, which is the Wells test, but uh, for the postdoc analysis, the Bonferroni, the Tacky, the Gabriel, and the Games Howell appear in the same table. So if the Aventus presents a p value lower than 0 0.05, you have to use the, the second uh, table of general comparisons and the final part of the uh, multiple comparison or post hoc uh, table. Cool. Thank you. And we have got one more question here. Um, another, is there a lower limit to normality, normality tests as well? Can we determine normality with three samples? Uh, sorry, what, what is the question? Is there a lower limit to normality tests as well? Can you determine it with three okay, samples? Uh, okay, okay, I understand. Uh, no, uh, the t-test, uh, can be used only to compare only two different groups. If we use a third group, as I said, we are accumulating the error because the error, for example, if we are using a p-value of 0 0.05, Sorry, the error is... Tony. Sorry, just, just to clarify, I think the question was about, um, say, for example, if your n is equal 3, even if you only have two groups, can you still okay. do a normality test? Okay, um, we can do a normality test uh, when um, we have three samples, but the probability to find differences between our distribution and the normal distribution are, are zero because with only three samples, we are going to obtain a p-value uh, higher than 0 0.05 in the hundred percent of the cases. I think, I think that that was the question. We have to use as many as many data as we can, as many samples as we can. Yes. So I, I think that was also a question that I had, but I think you answered very good. Which was, which is, if we have a low n, we should always use a non-parametric yeah. test. In in. Generally, uh, in statistics, uh, there is a general rule that we have to use as many uh, data as we can because the probability to find uh, the differences can change a lot if the N is very, very low, I think. Mm. Um. Another question as well, what's an easy definition of quality of variance or homocystic? Oh, that word. Uh, okay. Um, uh, the variance, uh, it's a measure of the dispersion of our data in a same group. I mean, if we have one variable and the data that we have present a very similar value, we will have a very, very small variance. Well, for example, if we have um, a group with one sample uh, very high, another medium, and another very low, the variance will be very, very big. And the almost elasticity is when we compare the variance from one group to another group. I don't know if I'm explaining properly. 
but the homoelasticity is the condition when the variance of two different groups are equal, are statistically equal. Cool. Hope that answers your question, Linda. Um, does anyone else have any final questions for Tony? Like we said, we'll be sending out the link to view the recording as well as we'll be sending out um, what Tony has prepared for you guys as a worksheet to go through all this. Um, so yes, and like I said, please don't forget to follow us on social media to stay in touch with our upcoming um, workshops as well. Um, another question, Tony, what is meant by spare? Oh gosh, I'm struggling. Sparicity of data. I think that I can use this slide. And this is the definition, is the quality of variances of the difference between all possible pairs of within subject conditions. Here, uh, when we are in a, a ANOVA test, we have three different uh, sources of variance. The different sources can be between the data of the same group and the data between all the groups. And the quality of very and the sphericity is the condition where the, the variability of the data of one group is completely similar in the different groups. I mean, if we have three different groups, we have two different ways to compare the data and the sphericity is the, the, the condition where we are checking the intra and intergroups uh, variability. Cool. Thanks, Tony. Um, yeah, I guess we can um, wrap up if anyone else, um, if everyone else is happy. Um, but yes, thank you, Tony, so much for putting all this together. We really appreciate what you've done. Um, it was really a good session and very informative. Um, we do have the links posted in the chats um, for you to follow us on social media, so please do check them out. Um, we'll also be sending out a survey form um, as we would like to hear your feedback on how we can further improve, so please do um, keep an eye out for that as well. Thank you so much all for joining us today and thank you so much once again, Tony, for giving us this amazing workshop. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Thank you, guys.